Why come there is so little critical thinking going on in education? Isn't that a loaded question? What does that mean? It's a loaded question, but I'll give you an answer. That seems to answer your question. Why do you think so many people believe there's so little critical thinking? I don't know. What do they say? Well, there are different answers. Some people say that there is so little critical thinking because our universities are dominated by postmodernism and poststructuralism, and therefore it's impossible for philosophers to produce valid arguments in defense of traditional views about the world. Others argue that the present state of American K-12 education is terrible, and that's why there's so little critical thinking. Others argue that the problem lies with the lack of critical thinking ability in general. They say that people are lousy at critical thinking, and this is what explains the lack of critical thinking in our universities and in K-12 education. Are these all the answers you have? Yep. Yeah. I think it's possible to explain the lack of critical thinking in education, but it's hard to explain why this is so without first explaining why there are so few thinkers who are not cut up by the postmodernists, poststructuralist, deconstructionists, and relativists sitting at important tables in our universities and teaching our students. Why do you say this is hard to explain? Because what we need to do is establish a new paradigm. We need a new way of thinking about things, and we need a new system of education that builds this new way of thinking in our students. This is what we need to explain the lack of critical thinking in our universities and in our K-12 system, but the simple fact is that there is no such new way of thinking, and therefore no such system for constructing this new way of thinking. You're assuming that everyone is the same way, but surely there are some people who do not fall into either of these categories. Yes, it's possible that there are a few people who don't fall into any of these categories, but there is no new tradition and therefore no new paradigm or new framework for thinking about things. Why do you say that? I'll give you a hypothetical example to illustrate my point. Suppose that there is a new framework for understanding physics, and this new framework agrees with classical physics on everything, but it includes a few additional assumptions. This new framework is used to study all of the same phenomena studied by classical physics, but it explains some of these phenomena better. Okay. This new framework will be able to explain some things that are hard to explain under the previous paradigm. However, this new framework will have no impact on our universities or on our K-12 system because there are no teachers that know about the advantages of this new framework over the previous one. And you're saying that the same thing is true of philosophy? Yes. So how does this explain why there are no philosophers who are not cut up by the postmodernists, poststructuralists, deconstructionists, and relativists? Why aren't there some philosophers that know about this new framework and use it to produce better arguments? Because people would have to learn philosophy in a different way in order for this new way of thinking to influence the field. The only people who will think with this new method are people who were taught with it from the very beginning. So are you saying that there are some people who think with this new method, but they're not philosophers? Maybe, but the people who think with this new method probably aren't even aware that they're doing it. Why not? Because they probably don't know that there is a new way of thinking about philosophy. They probably don't realize there's anything wrong with traditional philosophy because they were never taught about the postmodernists, poststructuralists, deconstructionists, and relativists. They didn't have to learn traditional philosophy in school, so they were never exposed to the weaknesses of traditional philosophical arguments. Were they taught this new way of thinking about philosophy in school? No, the new way of thinking about philosophy was learned outside of school by people who were not taught traditional philosophy. Who are these people? People that are part of the same tradition as those already mentioned, but who were taught this new way of thinking about philosophy by an older generation. This older generation is usually part of a religious community. So you're saying that people can be smarter than philosophers? Not at all. My point is that there are no thinkers outside of this tradition who are using this new way of thinking about philosophy.
So these thinkers are not producing good arguments for philosophical positions because they don't understand the best arguments for these positions. You're assuming that everyone agrees with the same people. But why do you think that everyone agrees with the same people? Because this is what's happened to philosophy, and it's what will happen to education if we keep doing what we're doing now. This is simply how things work out when there is no new movement or tradition of thought to challenge old thinking. What's your evidence for this? It's simple. No one is pushing new ideas. Why not? Because there are no new ideas to push. But why are there no ideas to push? Because there are no new ways of thinking about important issues, and therefore no new approaches to problem solving that need to be pushed on people. Why are there no new ways of thinking about important issues? Because there are no new paradigms. Why are there no new paradigms? Because the postmodernists, post structuralist, deconstructionists, and relativists have destroyed all the old ones. How did they do this? By destroying tradition. And they destroy tradition by attacking every convention that exists in the world. And since tradition is sustained by these conventions that exist in the world, tradition was destroyed by their attacks. I thought you said there was no new framework for thinking about things. Yes. When I talk about destroying tradition, I'm not talking about inventing a new paradigm or a new framework for understanding things. I'm saying that the postmodernists, post-structuralists, deconstructionists, and relativists are destructive because they are eviscerating all inherited paradigms and frameworks of thought. Why would anyone want to do this? Because tradition is based on assumptions that have been handed down from generation to generation. And since the assumptions of previous generations are based upon earlier assumptions, these assumptions become more and more outdated as time goes on. In order to combat this, Postmodernists, post-structuralists, deconstructionists, and relativists have been attacking the foundations of tradition in order to destroy all inherited assumptions. Do you think they're successful? Yes, and it's because postmodernism has become a dominant paradigm throughout education and in mainstream culture that we see the situation we're in right now. What do you think the postmodernists, post-structuralists, Deconstructionists and relativists are getting out of this. They're getting what they wanted all along. It's like they're living in a world that they created. How do you know that? Because I've read their literature. But because these people are now in charge of education and mainstream culture, we see the results. So we can be sure that the goals of the postmodernists, post-structuralists, deconstructionists, and relativists were always to destroy inherited assumptions and perpetuate their own misinterpretation of the world. Are you saying that their misinterpretation of the world is the only way they interpret the world? No. They're part of a religious tradition, and this tradition has always interpreted the world in this way. Can I read these writings? If you want to, but it will take years for you to make sense of them. The postmodernists, post-structuralists, deconstructionists, and relativists love to use obscure jargon and references that make it difficult for people to understand what they're trying to say. It just sounds like you're saying that everyone is wrong. No, I'm saying that everyone is right about their own assumptions, but no one is right about the assumptions of other people. So I can't learn anything from reading the writings of the postmodernists, poststructuralists, deconstructionists, and relativists. No, because they are so opposed to what you stand for that it's impossible to take what they say at face value. When you try to use their writings to understand your world or the world in general, you will only misunderstand even more than before. Why do you think that is? Because these people have attacked every last one of the assumptions you have uncritically inherited from your ancestors, and they have given their own misinterpretations of the world as a replacement for what your parents taught you about the world. So I can't learn anything from my parents. No, but don't feel bad. If this was being taught in a traditional classroom, it would look a lot different. But this is not being taught in a traditional classroom, so your parents are not going to know how to help you get back on track.
They can't know how to help you even if they knew, because it hasn't been taught in the way that tradition teaches. So I'm on my own then. Yes, you can roam around aimlessly for years without ever learning anything new about the world. You are not being taught how to think, but you are being taught what is considered correct for others to think. What people think is right in their own eyes, but not in the eyes of others. Does that feel very lonely? Yes, you are being separated from all that you hold dear by people who have misunderstood the world in the ways that they understand it, and then they have separated you from them. They say that people like them must be left alone to think for themselves, but they break the rules of reasoning and reasoning ethics in order to do this. They see your parents as weak if they learn what is considered correct according to their conventions and therefore indoctrinate you with their own assumptions and traditions against what you believe is right for yourself. You can still see yourself as other people see you, but not from your own perspective. The result is that you will lose the ability to be a part of other people's lives and they will lose the ability to be a part of yours. The reason why these kind of people so often disagree with one another is because their assumptions are so different. They may use the same terminology in order to describe the world, but they mean so many different things by it that it becomes impossible to communicate with one another. A. So I still don't understand why they want to do this. It's because they believe that their own misunderstandings of the world can help to make up for what they lack in experience and learning. For them, this is a lot easier than trying to understand what is already understood. Are they happy about this? No, they are deeply unhappy about what they are doing to you, but they are now in charge of all the institutions that now determine what is taught in schools. They do not want you to understand the world, because then you might be able to learn about it and decide for yourself what is right and wrong. So I am caught between a rock and a hard place. Yes, and there's no way out of this situation that doesn't seem like the only choice left. You've been given all of your ideas by others, even if those ideas were not entirely accurate, so you must accept them as right for yourself. Is that fair? No, it's not fair at all. But you are not in the position to decide what is right and what is wrong for yourself because others have already decided this for you. So I am sinful in the eyes of the postmodernists, poststructuralists, deconstructionists, and relativists. Yes, you must be a sinner if you believe otherwise. Once they have decided that your way of seeing things can't be right, they will say whatever it takes to perpetuate their own tradition by convincing you that your way of looking at things is wrong, and therefore your way of acting is wrong as well. But is my way of looking at things wrong? No, everyone's way is wrong in their own eyes, but not if they are right about what is right for others. Shouldn't I at least be allowed to think about what I believe? No, your ideas and your thoughts must be consistent with what others believe. What if my beliefs and thoughts don't fit in with what others believe? If you're not willing to change your mind to fit the tradition, then you're not only a sinner, but you will be told that you are threatening everyone else's view of the world. The postmodernists, poststructuralists, deconstructionists, and relativists will call on people like yourself to come together and make decisions about how the world should be changed for the good of everyone. Is that right? Yes, that is exactly how it works. Mm -hmm.